thank you for the love of this body, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for Pastor Mark and Sister Jackie. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one that comes, Father God. Those who wish to be here, Father God, and can't be here all the time. But, Father God, we stand in the gap today and hold them up, Lord, Father God. We pray for the needs of people, Father God. Lord, Father, in this day, Father God, we all need you, Lord, Father. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. And so we stand in the gap and pray for each other, Father God, for the needs, Lord, Father God, for, for a touch of you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit to reveal himself to us, Lord, Father God. And Lord, Father, we ask that the one that needs a touch in the physical body, Lord, the one that needs a touch in the finances, Father God, the one that needs direction, Father God, the one that needs a healing, Father God, the one that needs deliverance, Father God, all the needs, Father God, the one that has a broken heart, and the one, Father God, that has a broken relationship. Father God, all the needs, you know, Father God, we don't know all of them, but you gave us your Holy Spirit, Father God, to help us when we don't know, Father God, when we don't know what to pray for and how to pray. But you gave us your spirit to live inside of us, Lord, that we can come to you and pray on their behalf, even when we don't know, Father. And Lord, for this we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And Father God, we thank you for our praise team, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord Father God, that the gifts that you have given them to usher you in, Father God. We thank you, Lord Father God, for your presence that filled this place, Lord Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we know, Father God, that in your presence, in your presence, Lord Father, there's healing that takes place, Father God. In your presence, Father God, prayers are answered in your presence. In your presence, Lord Father God, is where we we want to be, Father God, in that secret place with you, Father God, where we are covered under your wings, oh God. Lord, we thank you for that today, Father, and we ask that you would have your way in the service, Father God. We ask that you would strengthen Pastor Mark tonight, Father God, and we ask, Lord, Father God, that you would just pour out your spirit in here today, Father God, and touch him, Father, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father God. Just cover Pastor Mark and fill him with your spirit tonight, Father God. And Lord, you Use the man of God tonight to lead us and to guide us, Father God, the way that you would have us to go, Father God. Let, oh, Father God, when he speaks, let it be your words, Father God, that speaks to us and penetrates our hearts and change us, Father God, so that we will have a word in season, so we will know how to answer people, so that we can lead people to you, Father God, that we can reveal you, Father God, the way you have revealed yourself to us, that we can reveal them, you reveal you to them, Father God. Lord, Father, we ask that you would move mighty in this service tonight, Father God. And we pray for this nation, Lord, Father. We pray for our leaders, Lord, Father God. We pray for our children, Father God. We pray, Father God, for our families, our loved ones, Father God. We just send prayers up to you tonight, Lord, Father God, that you would just move mightily and touch, Father God, wherever the need be, Father. And we will be so careful tonight to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Your name, oh Lord. Bless your name. 
What our hearts long 
the front, we're going to pray for a few minutes. Everybody walk to the front, we're going to pray for a few minutes. <clears throat> Everyone in the room, please. <clears throat> hey, there, come on up here on the platform. Now what's going on here? <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you're saying. Been there and done that, sister. My shoulders are... Yeah, oh yeah. I've had them both fixed. <clears throat> I'm going to get near a chair, sorry. <laughs> yeah, shoulders are not fun, man. <clears throat> <clears throat> hey, Kate, could you guys move down just a little bit? Let's bring this line to about, like, down to here. Yep, yeah, I'll bring a chair for it. <clears throat> there you go. <clears throat> okay, we've been what we've been praying for is revival tonight. We're gonna pray for I want you to let this get in your head for a minute. Direction. Direction. Okay, we're gonna pray monotone. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. English, however you want to pray, but keep it monotone. Glory to God. Direction. Okay, we're going to keep praying just for a moment for your direction for your direction mighty God <clears throat> your purpose and the funds for that purpose <clears throat> I want you to pray this for your own life for a moment purpose what's our purpose Direction and funds for that purpose that God has given us. So pray that just for a moment. Just pray in the Spirit. You don't have to play. Pray out loud. Just pray in the Spirit just for a moment. <coughs> Yes, mighty God. <clears throat> mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty Jesus. Mighty God. Mighty God. <coughs> Mighty God. <coughs> mm. Mighty God. Mm. 
purpose, 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 direction, and funds for purpose. <clears throat> so we're praying for. <clears throat> Keep praying for the same thing. Mmm. Yes, mighty God, purpose, what's your purpose, give us your directions, mighty God, your directions, Father God, and the funds to meet that goal, <clears throat> what you've planted inside of us, mighty God, <clears throat> Jesus. Mm, whether it be a business whether it be a business mighty God travel direction mighty God thy will be done Father God mighty God <clears throat> Jesus mm. Abram had purpose, direction, and funds. Purpose, direction, and funds, mighty God. <clears throat> purpose, direction, and funds, Father God. Woo! Jesus. Mmm, <clears throat> mighty God. There it is, mighty God. Mm. Glory. Glory to God. Mm. Woo. Mm, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. Jesus. 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 Jesus, mighty God. Jesus, mighty God. Jesus, mighty God. Mm, glory. Jesus, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God. Mm. Mighty God, Jesus, your hands on it, your hands on it, <clears throat> Woo! your hands on it, your hands on it, mm. Woo! Hands on it. Your hands on it. <clears throat> Woo! <clears throat> Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Jesus. Your hands on it, mighty God. <clears throat> feel your hand on it. I can feel your hand on it. I can feel your hand on it, mighty God. Mighty God. Woo. Feel your hand on it, Father God. Feel your hand on it, mighty God. <clears throat> feel your hand on it, Father God. Feel your hand on it, mighty God. Mm, Jesus. Feel your hand on it, Lord, Father God. Mm, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mm. Mighty God, mighty God. Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Your hands on it. Your hands on it. <coughs> Woo. Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Glory. Glory. To God. Mm. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Mighty God. Mighty God. Jesus. Jesus. Glory. Mighty God. Mighty God. Jesus. Jesus. Mighty God. Mighty God. Woo! Glory. Glory. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. There you are. Jesus, your hands on it, Father God. Your hands on it, mighty God. Your hand is on it, Father God. Your hands on it, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Mm. Mm. Jesus. Mm. 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 Glory, glory. Mighty God. <laughs> Mighty God. Preservation. Preservation. Mighty God, <coughs> Jesus. Mm. Mighty God. Mm. 
Let that happen. Let that happen, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, Mighty God. Mighty God. Jesus, 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 mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Making war in the heavenlies, <clears throat> bringing down principalities. <clears throat> Mighty God. Mighty God. Mm, 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 mm. Jesus. Jesus. <clears throat> bringing down principalities. 
Standing firm in Jesus' victory. Mighty God. Mm -mm 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 -mm. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, mighty God. <clears throat> Mount up with wings as eagles, Lord Father God. Mm. <laughs> Okay, you can be seated, thanks. <clears throat> papo, papo. <clears throat> Look here, man, she's working out in the parking lot today and got wounded. <clears throat> I know them shoulders, man. <clears throat> you can get them fixed and everything, they're never right again. Hate to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> well you keep praying sister you just keep right on praying there <clears throat> as you're praying pray for mine yeah. pat all's knees don't forget them knees <clears throat> or the elbows <clears throat> amen amen <clears throat> I have a question here. See, let me find it real quick. Okay, starting out with, we're just going to read these real quick, okay? Just these few scriptures. <clears throat> I want Revelations 6, 2, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Revelations 19, 11 through 21. But you're not going to read 11 through 21, just the first two little verses. Revelations 19, starting in verse 11. And I saw heaven open up, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. That's good. So... <clears throat> <clears throat> there is a debate here in this. Uh, this is not what I'm speaking about. I just wanted to shoot this out to you. There is de a debate in Revelation 6-2 and Revelation 19-11 through 21. Who that is on that white horse. Because red follows black and pale. The red horse is the spirit of war. Black ho horse is the spirit of famine. And the pale horse is the spirit of death or pestilence or death. <clears throat> so some people think that this Revelations 6 2 is Satan. Revelations 19 seems to rebuke that. <clears throat> so now what I want to go to tonight is this. If you have sown anything, I don't care what it is, <clears throat> time, 
finances. I don't care what you have sown. What is that? Do you, no, Josh. <clears throat> it's going to come back. <clears throat> Joshua. Joshua 1.8. <clears throat> says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou shalt, uh, and that thou may prosper and observe to do according to all that is written therein. Uh, read that, little King James, will you? <clears throat> the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate it therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Thank you. Uh, God gave Joshua basically a command. He said, here's what you do. If you meditate my word, you're going to be very successful. Okay? Yeah. Now, I, I was meditating this today, and I feel that God is really, I think we're right on the verge of a, an eruption in the spirit. If you, it, the Bible says if you look in the natural, you can tell what's going on in the spiritual. So there's, God's wanting to unite and the world's wanting to bring discord. Watch the news, it's horrible. It's things that are going on. Now, Jackie, I believe this is, as I was thinking about this, meditating on this, I think that this is, has a little bit to do with you and I. You know, Satan has not, he's tried. Satan has not stopped our sowing. He's tried to. Over the years, he's tried to stop it. He's wanted to stop it. Same with you guys. Look over at your neighbor and say, if you're a sower, it's getting ready to, something's getting ready to happen. Powerful. You look how, how, how hard the world's fighting right now. And that's what's going on in the spirit. Something's getting ready to happen, guys, I'm telling you. <clears throat> the Bible says in Proverbs 12, Three, a man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Mark, so stick with me a second. Mark 4, 31 and 32. It is like 31 a, and 32. Go ahead. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Now if God sees what we have sown and we're waiting for the harvest of what we've sown everybody in the room is whether you know it or not you're, that's what you're waiting on your spirit's waiting on it we're waiting on it patiently so if God sees in Mark 4 31 and 32 if he sees it full grown already established and already full then it's going to happen whether you like it or not it's going to happen um so here comes the enemy. I don't know how you guys have been doing. But for, let's see. Sunday night. We left out of here Sunday. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. What a war at night. I'm telling you what a war. Tuesday night. I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Wide awake. Just awake. Boom. That's the way he does you when he wakes you up. I wake up 2 o'clock in the morning. I didn't sense anything. I got up. I thought I had to go in the other room. And uh, all of a sudden when I walked in the hallway, I had this cold chill come over me. And I looked down the hallway and there's this figure standing at the end of the room. I didn't know what it was until today. God told me that we, I was doing battle for someone that I went and prayed for today. And he says, the enemy always comes in and it cannot stop what you've sown. Look at your neighbor and say, it cannot stop. Satan cannot stop. What I have sown, it's going to come to pass. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. 
Somebody say, shake somebody's hand and say, Amen. Everything that I've sown is coming up. And you can find that scripture. That's true. Either it be a good or bad, it's coming to pass. Yes. Amen? Yes. So here's what the enemy uses and he tries to attack your mind to get you to think harvest is not coming. Affliction. Somebody say, where's it? where are you at? Affliction. Where'd she go? There you are. Your mind must have been on that today. You did that today, right? You, your mind must have been on that pain because here you are with this strap. He uses affliction, persecution. Danny, you're being persecuted at work, aren't you? You are? Did you know this, every seed that you've sown is coming up, brother? Amen. I don't care what the enemy throws. Amen. Cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things. Your seed that you planted is coming up. You cannot stop it. It is coming up. Jackie, stand up for a minute. <clears throat> Lift your hands up. I want you to begin to praise God. Think for a moment all the seeds that have been planted in 32 years of ministry. Think about that for a minute. And never asked anybody for anything. Think about that for a second. Now just think about your life. How many times have you got to share the word of God with somebody? I'm telling you, harvest is right at the door, guys. Harvest is right at the door. Somebody shout for a minute. <clears throat> the first one I read to you is care. Cares of the world choke the word of God. Cares in scripture is grief, it's oppression of mind, and it's worry. Boy, you don't have any worry once it pops up, do you? The Bible says, care is a thorn, Matthew 13, 22. Care, caring, or cares of the world is a thorn in your side. Doesn't matter if the thorn's there, harvest is coming. Matthew 13, 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Luke 8, 14. Luke 8. Come on, look over at your neighbor and say, everything I planted is coming up. Say it again. Say, everything I planted is coming up. Lift your hands up for a moment. Say, but the anointing is going to destroy, burn down all the crops that are not worthy of my praise. <clears throat> Luke 8, 14. Would you read that, please? <clears throat> and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. I'm sitting there watching the news and I'm thinking, what is going on? All the hatred. <clears throat> hatred. I mean hatred. Certain groups of people calling out to kill other groups of people. Yes. Oh He's trying to divide, but he can't do it. I'm telling you the harvest is coming. I'm telling you the harvest is coming. I don't care what man says, the devil says, harvest is coming. 2 Corinthians 11, 28. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. And care can weigh you down, but that not, does not mean the harvest is not coming. It's coming. And it's going to be powerful. Somebody say it's going to be powerful. So in scripture, the harvest, if you've planted, it's guaranteed it's coming. So if you, if you're standing here, you're born again, you've been walking with God two years, five years, one year, everything you planted is popping up. So God's people that have sown, God's people that have sown into God's kingdom, no matter what it is, an act of kindness, love, Patience with people. If that's not hard for you, that's a... It, it was hard for me to be patient. I had people come up to me and say, we can't even talk to you. You're, you can't, we can't talk to you. You're not patient. <clears throat> Never been. That God's taught me patience over 32 years. I mean, it took a long time to teach me, but he did. So God's people that are sown into God's kingdom. Say God's kingdom. God's say, God's kingdom. God's say God's kingdom. Say God's kingdom, not man's kingdom. Say God's kingdom. God's kingdom. God's kingdom. God's kingdom. Okay, if we plan into God's kingdom. 
The latter rain has already wet our harvest. We planted the seed. We covered it up. The rain has came and it's popping up. Hebrews 4.12 says God's word is for body, soul, and spirit. And Father God, we believe that with all our hearts. Lord Father, we believe that everything that we have done, Lord Father, we will reap the harvest. Amen. Ephesians 6.17. Would you read that for me, please? Ephesians. 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 Sometimes I tell you what, guys. You need to stand in front of a mirror and say this. It's coming up. It's coming up. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm telling you guys, I, when I was working, I didn't think it was going to happen. But boy, I tell you, when God tells you it's time to go, it's time to go. Yeah. Right. Amen? Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with supplication for me, blah, blah, blah. The Word of God gives us the victory, the protection. Look at your neighbor and say, this is very important. Very important. Say, with victory comes protection. Protection covers the victory. Say, God's protection covers the victory. The Bible says tonight we stand in righteousness. We have the ability to stand in God's presence without guilt, without condemnation. Standing in God's presence knowing that what we have sown, we're going to get back. Tonight we pray, we stand here, Lord Father. This is what you told me to do. Tonight we stand here in prayer, Lord Father God, and we speak directly to Satan. You will not take, divide, destroy what God has given us to plant because harvest is ours. Somebody get to your feet and praise him for a minute. Somebody praise him for a second. Somebody praise him for a minute. I said somebody praise him for a minute. I said somebody praise him for a minute. Father, I believe this with all my heart. <coughs> believe it with all my heart. Yes, Somebody Lord. say amen. amen. Believe it with all my heart. Yes, Lord. Now, Father God, we're going to stand on scripture tonight, Lord Father. Yes. I know some of you might have be having, having some financial things. Some of you might be having things going on on your job. I, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not totally all sure about everything. But Hebrews 1.3, I want you to read that, please. Keep your mind on harvest. Go. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Upholding all things. Things. Say things. things. By the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins. Set down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So Father we know you're upholding all things Lord Father. All we have to do is be patient and wait. Somebody say that with me. Say patient. patient. Say patient, patient. And wait. Is there anybody in the room that's 45? Anybody in the room that's close? You are? Come on down here. I want to tell you what that means. <clears throat> 45. Somebody say 45. 45. <clears throat> Stand right there. <clears throat> 45 means perseverance. 45. I looked it up today. I don't know why that popped my spirit. 45 means perseverance. I found 45 in scripture. Uh, Abraham and Lot. He, remember he said for 45 you won't destroy the city. For the start of the 50 it goes down to 45. He said or even lower. He gets down to 45. I will. In the midst of everything that's going on. Joshua. In the midst of everything that was happening. Everything. Caleb. Did not die through battles. Through warfare. 45, 45 years. He said, God told him, he said, you will not die until you've already spied out the land. 45 years. Perseverance. We will prevail, Father God. We will stand here, Lord, for, for, Father mighty God. 45. 45. That's going to mean something when you get home because it's going to pop into you what I'm saying. Say 45. 45. We will prevail. Persevere. Amen. God's word to him, he said, Numbers 14, spy out the land. And that's exactly what he did. He did not die in warfare. 45 meant something. Have a seat. Thank you. So or sows God's word. Somebody say this with me. Say, I have sown God's word. I have sown love, 
Love. Patience. Patience. I have sowed, 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 sowed. I have sowed. Now think about it in your head what you've sown because it's coming back. Somebody say it's coming back. Coming back. Amen. The Bible says in Romans, 2 Corinthians, all through scripture it says that Jesus totally annihilated Satan in his earth walk, his resurrection, and in the new creature, you and I. It was an expectation for him to do that. He sent his word to heal us. Amen? Amen. Galatians 6, 7. If we could read that, please. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Read it to him again because there's two bad, there's a good area and there's a bad area. Read be, it to him again. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he Stand also Stand up, lift reap. your hands up, everyone in the room. Okay, I want to read it to you again. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. <clears throat> Don't think because you, you did this and this, it's not going to pop up. It's going to pop up. But the way you destroy what is not good is through praise. Yeah. Remember when everything comes to the door, the enemy comes to the door, praise pushes him out. Yeah. Acts, they went into praise and worship, the prison doors were opened up, and the prisoners were set free. So, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Father God, in the midst of reaping, Lord Father, we want the good stuff. And harvest is at the door. I know it is, Father God. I can see it. I can see it. We have scattered seed, Father God, on good ground. Lord Father, we have taken hands, our tools, and we've worked, Lord Father, and done exactly what you've told us to do. Everyone in the room, say everyone in the room. <clears throat> you, we have done something sometime that God is so happy with. Amen. Father God, it may be corn, it may be wheat. That's what you, people sow. Seeds of corn, seeds of wheat. And that's exactly what you get, what you sowed. <clears throat> Somebody say that to me. That's exactly what we get is what we sow. Wave at me. Say, what I have sown is exactly what I'm going to get back. Amen. You're not going to sow wheat and get corn. You're not going to sow corn and get apples. Whatever you sown is what you're going to get. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So if I've sown hate towards people, that's exactly what I'm going to get back. If I've sown love, that's exactly what I'm, I'm going to get back. If I believed in God's kingdom and did exactly what God has asked me to do, that's exactly what I'm going to get back. Please stay standing. Galatians 6, 8 and 6, 9, Jacqueline. <coughs> For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Put your hands up for a minute, you guys. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Sometimes you want to faint. But you got to always remember, Satan always comes with five weapons to try to get you to think that what you've planted is not going to come up. It's going to come up. It has to come up. It's a principle. It has to come up. You put seed in, it's coming up. Unless you water it too much, you kill it. Or you don't water it at all. I mean, yeah, I guess it would die. But there's seeds, other seeds all, all around that's going to pop up. Lift your hands up for a moment, everybody in the room. Close your eyes, and I want you to think about this just for one moment. If Satan comes, he comes with affliction, cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches, um, whatever the five words, five of them he comes at you with. All five of them. It's to get you to think that what you have planted is not going to come up. Now, I ask God, Lord, I've prayed for my wife. I've prayed for her knees. I've prayed for her ankles. Like Papa tonight. Father, I've prayed for his knees. He said, pray for my knees. Sister, with your arm. Lord, Father, touch my arm. That's what the enemy uses to get to your mind to make you think that the harvest is not going to come. It's coming whether you feel it or not, brothers and sisters. It is coming. So what he says to do is stand there. Know that I am God and I'm going to do it. I am going to bring the harvest. And what we got to do is prepare for it. Amen? Amen. Somebody say prepare for it. Prepare. Somebody say prepare for it. Prepare. Now give him praise for a minute. <clears throat> I said give him praise for a minute. I said give him praise for a minute. <clears throat> Woo! Woo! Mighty God, mighty God. 
Death can't kill it. Demons can't destroy it. Hell cannot destroy it. It is going to take place. <laughs> All right, you can be seated. <clears throat> Jackie, I want you to start Leviticus chapter 19. Read 19.9. Um, <clears throat> Go right in the middle of it. And when ye reap the harvest of your land... And? Somebody say, and? and. When? I reap, reap the harvest of my land, of your land. He says, but it's you. Make it personal. My land. Okay, go ahead. Thou shall not wholly reap the corners of thy field. Don't, don't, don't reap it all. Neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. And then ten. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor. Uh oh. Lift your hands up. You got your hands up? <clears throat> Say, harvest is coming. Harvest. Say, harvest is coming in my life. So, what he's telling you right here, I'm going to explain it very, this is the way, what he's saying to you. He was telling me, he said, now, when harvest comes in your land, you got to leave some of it in the field. You don't take it to the poor. They come and get it on their own. You don't hand feed them. They got to come and get it. Now I want you to put that in Leviticus. I want you to put that in the, um, uh, what is that I like? New American Standard. <coughs> Nine and ten. Now when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very corners of your field. So don't, to the very corners, so four corners, northeast, south, and west, four corners. Don't reap it all. Reap the center of it. Reap the edges of it. But don't mess with the corners now. Them are for somebody else. <coughs> Neither shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. All right, ten. Nor shall you glean your vineyard, nor shall you gather the fallen fruit of your vineyard, you shall leave them for the needy and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Now I want you to say that with me. Leave that for the needy yes. and the stranger. Lift your hand up. Say harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. Say I got to know what to do with harvest. Say it again. I have to know what to do with harvest. If I do something wrong against God's word, I, harvest is going to happen in another place. Or I'm going to mess it up. So I do exactly what he says. So he says the needy and the stranger. Needy, someone needing something, they made them go into the field and get it themselves. They didn't pluck it for them. They said, you go do it. We left it for you, you go do it. Stranger, stranger comes in, same thing. We don't know you, but we left something for you. Go do it. So, four corners. Look at me, wave at me. Four corners. So here's what the four corners do now. They left it for the needy and the strangers. Here's what the four corners do. You come pluck it for us. Because you got more than we got. No. That's not what God said. God said you go get it. And don't complain about what I have. Verse 11. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. Okay, now he's going to something else. Now 23, 22. Say, look at your neighbor and say, harvest. harvest. It's coming and I don't have to know what to do with it. 23, 22. <clears throat> 23, 22. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Is, now go over to Deuteronomy 24 and 19. 24 and 19. <clears throat> 
When thou cuttest down thy harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheath in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. So he's saying, okay, now you went out, you cut your, you did your cuttings, you left your corners, you did exactly what I told you. Now if you drop something out there, leave it there for the fatherless, and that would be what, kids? Fatherless, they could be older, I don't know. For the, for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. Lift your hands up for a moment. Somebody say this with me. Say, I, I am going to be blessed in harvest time and I'm going to watch over everything that God gives me that I use it properly. Amen? Very important that I use it properly, Lord Father God. I use it according to thy will, not my will. Thy will be done, mighty God. Somebody say, thy will be done. Okay, so Father God, we found the ground. You gave us the ground. We dug up the holes, planted the seed. We watered it. We had the tools. We had the hands to do it. We had the love to do it. And now we're waiting on the harvest from it. We've scattered the seed. Now you're telling us what to do with it. Now we know what to do with it. And we're going to do it properly. Somebody said we're going to do it properly. You guys, I'm trying to show you something that's powerful here. If you do it right, if you don't do it right, here's what happens. If you don't do it according to scripture, the last part of the verse, that the Lord thy God may bless thee. So if you do it any other way, there's no blessing on it. So I go out, I plant seed, I got a harvest, it comes up. Is that the end of it? For some people it's the end of it. Because they don't know what to do with the harvest. They may, well they may do what Leviticus said not to do. Well so what you've given, if you use it in that way, that harvest is not blessed. There's a blessing on top of the harvest. Hello, wave at me. It's my wave. Look at your neighbor and say this to your neighbor. Say, I planted seed, I seed. watered it, watered the seed came up, I got the harvest, and now what's in my hand is from the seed, and if I want what's in my hand to be blessed, I got to do what's right with it. Right? Wave at me. Now when you plant the seed, that's... That's a principle. You plant seed, it's going to come up. There's no blessing behind that. You put the seed down, it's going to come up. The blessing comes when you get the harvest. It's in your hand. You got to know what to do with it. That's where the blessing comes. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Okay, 2 Corinthians. Give me just a minute. What time is it? Oh yeah. 2 Corinthians 5. Seventeen through twenty-one, Jackie. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, and that's us. If any man, that's me. Say that's me. Be in Christ. Be in Christ. He is a new creature. Oh, so my old ways of doing things are passed away. My old thought, the way I want to think, the way this should work, is gone. Behold, all things are become new. I got a new thought now. Leviticus, say Leviticus, Leviticus. has given me a new thought on this. Go back to Leviticus just for a minute. Leviticus, what was that, 29? Leviticus 19.9. Uh, Leviticus, now hold your hand in Corinthians though. Uh, Leviticus 19.9. Jacqueline. When ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. And thou shalt no. not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Okay, now go back over to um, Corinthians and finish Corinthians. 
2 uh, Corinthians 5, 17, you were halfway through 17. He's a new creature, old things have passed away, or my old thoughts, my own way of thinking it the way it should work. Somebody say the way I think it should work. The Lift your hands up for a minute. Has anyone in the room ever taken a dollar out of your pocket, or a ten, let's say a ten, and blessed someone with it? And thought you were going to get a harvest back and you didn't get nothing back? Was the ten blessed that you gave away? No. No, it wasn't blessed because God didn't tell me to do that with it. Right? So this is the same thing. It's working the same. It's the same principle. It's just working the same way. Okay, go ahead in verse 18. And all things are... All things... Remember she read to you, God is hold, upholding all things by the word of his power. Hebrews 1, 3. Go ahead and finish this. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. How can we do that if we don't even have... Uh, our head straight in areas that it should be straight. Verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. How can we do that, Father God? The word of reconciliation if we don't even have the basic things correct. Verse 20 and 21. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did ambassadors for Christ. Okay, so an ambassador, one that's doing it right. You wouldn't send an ambassador over to, to another country if, wasn't, if he wasn't doing it right, would you? Yeah. Right. So you take an ambassador, you, and we're supposed to be doing it right. We're supposed to be doing these things according to principle. And when you don't do it according to principle, it's not blessed. Lift your hands up. So the $10 that I gave... This guy, thinking it was going to get blessed, didn't get blessed. He's still in the same position he's always in, wanting another ten. Wave at me. It's the truth. Somebody say, it's true. Somebody say, it is true. Okay. Go. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. And you look at that and you go, be ye right. Ah, yes, amen, I'm reconciled back to God. Are you reconciled through scripture though? Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Now for you that him. have never heard this story, let me tell you this story. When we first started out over in Oakland, I think probably half of you haven't heard this. We first started out over in Oakland. We had no idea what we were doing. None. I didn't know what I was doing. Two people came in. One guy comes in. And we thought, well, we're a Christian. You're supposed to bless everybody who comes in the door. If they ask for it, give it to them. So this guy comes in and tells us, he said, I have rent to pay. It's a hundred bucks. You got a hundred bucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we give them a guy a hundred dollars. He comes back a month later. Now, he used to come every Friday, but now he's come a month. He, there's a month. Comes back and he says, get stopped all there. I got to repent. What for? I bought a... A woman with my hundred dollars. Well, that hundred dollars wasn't blessed. No. <laughs> Was it? I did. I did it wrong. I didn't know. Next guy comes in. We're still stupid. Next guy comes in. Thirty dollars. I, I, I need thirty dollars to pay a light bill. Gonna th I don't want to have any lights. All right. And he came back quicker. He said, "Well, I did. It. I, here's what I did with the thirty dollars. I thought." Well, what do you get for 30 bucks? This guy got $100. I mean, you got you a $30. I don't understand. That must have been a cheap one. <laughs> right? So I'm thinking, well, look, we didn't do according to what God said. If we had done according to what God said, that harvest that we were giving away would have been blessed. That's right. But it wasn't blessed because we didn't do it right. We should have made him go in the field and get it. We left it for you. Go get it. <laughs> Crazy. I'm almost done, you guys. Say amen. No. 
<coughs> Romans 5.17. <coughs> I'm telling you, that's the truth, sister. I was there. I seen it with my own eyes. <coughs> For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. I, I don't know why I wrote that down. But one, one more quick story and you, and you can leave. <coughs> uh, Jackie's mother would go to a Baptist church. What a Baptist church in Florida? Yeah, Baptist church. One day this guy comes in. Now this is what, seed. You're talking about if seed is not used right? They must have been used. They must have been used in their harvest. I'm not talking about seed. They must have been used in the harvest that they got off the seed in the church. Right. Here's what happened. This guy comes in. He's got holes in his suit. Holes in his shoes. He just kind of looked like he was, you know, off the street. <clears throat> comes in the church. He goes right to the deacon. He says, I need you to do me a favor, brother. I need you to cash this $50 check for me and bring it to me Sunday. Deacon said, okay, I'll do it. So he writes the check. Deacon comes back a couple days later, whatever it was. Gives him the money. Guy counts it. Yeah, 50 bucks. Puts it in his pocket. He did that about three times. Finally, the third time, he didn't write the check for 50. He wrote it for 100. Hands it to him. And the guy says, I don't think he said anything to him then. No. He goes to the bank, cashes it, gets the 100 bucks. And he says, here's your hundred dollars. Oh, a hundred. He said, you didn't write it for fifty, you wrote it for a hundred. He said, I was just testing you. Guys, the guy dies about a month or so later, leaves four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the church. So see, if they weren't upright with harvest, they would have never got that. So something was happening right. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I want everything in my life to be an oiled will and to be properly working for God's kingdom. Amen. Alright guys, thank you. <clears throat> I'm glad you enjoyed that, sister.